hi guys so um okay today i am speaking to someone who's really really cool who's been kind of a mentor to me over the lockdown now with you know my journey with hydroponics and um, he's super cool to talk to uh dr sairam reddy he's the chief scientific officer at urban kisan he has about 20 years of experience um he's um he, he's a seed specialist he's a molecular biologist and uh, he has several awards uh to his name so i am super excited to be talking to him today so let's bring him on and answer all our questions Hi guys, I hope you guys are having like a good weekend so far. Hi, hi. Thank you for all the love. Hi. hi. How are you? I'm fine, Samantha Garu. How about you? I'm very good. Nice to see you. Pleasure. Your background is way better than mine, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's green. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely background. I, every time I see you, you from Urban Kisan, I want to steal everything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so I was just telling um, guys uh, that you know you've been like my mentor over the lockdown, teaching me everything I I need to know about hydroponics. Um, yeah. Um, I want want to know. Like, how did this journey start for you? You know, your interest in hydroponics. Uh, please tell us. Yeah, uh, it's a good question to start with. Uh, yeah, my journey with uh, hydroponics was actually a necessity rather than a passion. Um, you know, when uh, when I was uh, reading through newspaper one day, I found a very terrifying news that uh, most of the food what we eat here in Hyderabad, uh, in fact, is coming from you know. Uh, some areas which are not actually advised to grow crops. Something like, you know, the Musi river beds. You know, as a result of it, most of the food what we eat is actually carrying lots of, uh, you know, heavy metal intoxications. Mm. We always talk about the pesticide making the, you know, the crop free from pesticides, but we less talk about this, uh, you know, the heavy metal uh, contaminations in the soils especially in the urban, suburban areas and where the crop is being grown there and then we are eating that crop. So one uh, very important thing which made me to really think in these lines is, you know, the, as per WHO, World Health Organization, about 70% of Indian women are anemic. You go to a doctor, they say eat lots of greens. Yes. And we eat greens, but those greens are full of heavy metals like lead, which in fact counteract on hemoglobin what we have and that makes us more anemic. Oh my God. So that's the uh, uh, scary thing, you know. So it made me to think alternate. What do we do at least to help these urban, uh, you know, dwellers to at least can they grow their greens, you know, in their balcony? So that is where uh, my search, you know, for an alternate uh, growing techniques started. I ended up with this hydroponics. Wow. So, I started doing this at my home, you know, in my balcony yes. and try to design everything which fits to actually an Indian, you know, the balcony designs and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember when I uh, spoke to you first, you you showed me the video of your balcony and everything that you had yes. And I immediately when I saw it, I, was, I have to do it. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> so, which is why I wanted to, um, for you to to, you know, my followers, for you to educate them as well and for you to share with them what I know, what you with me as well, uh, about, you know, how important it is for household to be able to grow a little portion of their food, to know exactly yes. coming from. So what does growing your own food mean to you? And what, See, what uh, impact uh, will 
will it make if in the society if every household uh, grows a post what is, what is the impact that you see? yeah see uh, uh, what i see is like it's not possible for us to grow all the food what we eat as you rightly mentioned can we grow at least a portion of food and my actual journey with this uh, uh hydroponics and then urban kisan started with the greens you know the again as uh, the medical advice every one of us should eat uh, 50 grams grams of uh, you know the greens twice a week this is the minimum input we need to uh, have it so that means if we can uh, and grow at least greens at least greens which you can harvest twice a week you know so that means uh, uh, when if you take your uh, uh, one month uh, it is like you know the eight days of your uh, uh, you know the uh, greens intake is taken care yeah and greens is our primary input for our uh, you know the vitamins uh, minerals like iron and many other things that's a very very important food so mm-hmm. if if every one of us can grow um this greens at least so that uh, helps us to you know the infuse uh, more amount of uh, nutritive requirements nutritive values to uh, us i'm not talking about calories but i'm talking about other part of uh, nutrition especially vitamins and minerals so um yeah uh, like you know i've had this grow with me um journey and uh, so yeah i was uh, very very happy that so many uh, joined me on this journey and through this uh, journey i understood the problems that many are facing like with urban farming you know it has to do with space or you know there's not much space which you really very uh, helpfully mm. the kick vertical and you know that fit exactly yeah uh, so that's all the with space but also there's a problem when it comes to pests uh, what how how do they not lose their produce when it, you know with dealing with pests yeah i should really compliment you for uh, this initiative of grow with me and as uh, outside you know i'm seeing the impact of it lots of people uh, you know you have a huge follow followers and so many of them are into it and they are uh, uh, trying to uh, grow their food at least some portion of it and several of them are new initiatives of you know the growing food uh, and it's, it's amazing amazing i mean i should really compliment and appreciate you for that Thank coming you. to your question of uh, the pest uh, yeah since we are not protecting you know the crop from anything we are not building anything around that they are just open for anything so the pest is a common thing you know that we uh, we cannot avoid getting it but since we are growing these uh, crops in hydroponics their uh, abilities to withstand the pest is uh, to a great extent i um, mean what my observations is very high so yeah. they uh, to a great extent they withstand but you know that they still not uh, uh, you know the insulated from pest we you still get pest mm-hmm. so what i say is that uh, it's very easy to avoid provided you uh, closely monitor them every day just have a look at those uh, small cute babies and if you find something just you can hand pick remove them mm. or just take a uh, soap water you know just spray uh, soap water that should take care or if there are any hard pests neem oil should take care okay so, so this is the, the trick here is uh, having uh, uh, i mean the close observation every day detecting the pest early at a very early age what the pest I, that's uh what is the dilution sir for this um soap water and neem oil that you say yeah the soap water actually uh, if you have uh, something like you know the liquid detergent uh, what we use in our domestic uh, you know kitchens and other places mm-hmm. so for 1 liter if you put 10 drops that should be uh, sufficient enough okay uh, if it is uh, neem oil neem oil you get 300 ppm 10000 ppm like that uh, i i i would advise to go with 300 ppm that is more than sufficient 5 ml of uh, uh, neem oil 
uh, for one liter of water and add three to four drops of uh, liquid detergent again. Don't forget to add uh, this liquid detergent, detergent to the uh, neem oil. So Hello. that should take care. Caps instead of drops. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Everything here, you know, what we what we uh, advise here is very little uh, care and little things and little inputs will uh, make you know the big changes. Yes, thank you for that. Um, so another, uh, you know, when hydroponics is relatively new to everyone's understanding, it was very very new to my understanding as well. You yeah. know. I have I remember asking you my first question was, will I be getting the same nutrients that I am getting uh, from, you know, soil farming? Which, soil. Is, mm. which, is a, which is a very, very important question because as we know, farming means soil. <laughs> Suddenly, yeah. uh, we really are right. that we don't need soil to grow these uh, plants. But does that mean we are getting the same nutrients from these greens uh, as we are getting from, you know, soil farming? Yeah, it's so, uh, an excellent question. You know, this is the fundamental of, uh, you know, the accepting this uh, hydroponics. Um, so w w what I would say is uh, the plant has the ability to uh, synthesize all the nutrition, what we actually need. It does synthesize. It doesn't actually take from the soil. It does Central not perception is it doesn't take all those things from soil. It takes only minerals from soil. It doesn't take a vitamin, it doesn't take anything, any of those uh, nutritive requirements what we actually take, except minerals, rest everything plant manufactures. Okay. Okay. So plant only take the, the basic minerals from the soil. That's all it takes. Okay. Rest everything plant does uh, as part of its biosynthetic pathways. Okay. So, uh, and you have a photo, a light is there to do photosynthesis and get the carbohydrates and then uh, our required uh, fat contents, vitamins, and all other things plant manufactures uh, in, in the leaf. Not, uh, they are not uh, actually absorbed from the soil. So, what we are actually doing here is we are making sure plant uh, uh, all the requirements of uh, the minerals are available in the, in the liquid form, you know, the soluble water uh, soluble form at okay. the root zone of the plant. Okay, the plant so absorbs those essential things and uh, manufacture all that what we need as a, um, in, a, in, the, in the form of nutrition. Okay, so that those are the ingredients, right? Uh, so the nutrients that you have, the two gives us those two nutrients yes. that the panic. Yes. Saying that yes. uh, you mimic the soil's nutrients, uh, give it in the liquid form. So if they're exactly. Not so whatever, yeah, whatever plant uh, actually takes from the soil, that we provide in the form of that, you know, the liquid. Are they chemical? Rest. Uh, they are actually chemicals. Uh, of course, plant can take only chemicals. Okay. You know, but there are simple minerals. They are not uh, very complex chemicals or anything. They're very simple minerals like calcium chloride or calcium nitrate, okay. you know. So there's very simple uh, uh, chemicals, boron, you know. There's a very simple uh, basic fundamental uh, minerals. That's what uh, plant absorbs. Plant cannot absorb, even if you give the organic uh, complex menu, uh, but plant requires uh, microbial uh, consortium to break down all the complex uh, organic molecules into small inorganic uh, uh, minerals and that plant absorbs. So we are giving those end product when I mean, what actually the microbes otherwise uh, uh, break down into. Okay. So would you call hydroponics organic? Uh, it's a very tricky question. I just wanted to uh, uh, say something here. We have a very uh, wrong notion about organic. Yeah, that's organic. <laughs> organic is not in chemical sense. Mm -hmm. organic in sustainability, you know, the anything. So, so we talk about business. Is it growing organically or inorganically? What does it mean? You know, so organic growth of a business means it's a sustainable growth. Mm -hmm. You don't see a sudden spike, but you know, the very, uh, I mean, study or very sustainable growth. Mm -hmm. So the organic farming, what we mean mm -hmm. is having a 
kind of you know organic system the agriculture system agronomy approaches which are sustainable so helps the soil soil don't get uh, degraded helps the plant plant won't uh, absorb any toxins and at the same time you know what we are eating plants for our nutrition nutrition is pure and untapped that is what is the actual core of uh, organic okay? okay so these organic definitions are there different you know from uh, continent to continent country to country and uh, things like that uh, hydroponics in us is actually classified as organic american government declared uh, hydroponics as organic okay. but of course there is a lawsuit against government saying that no this is not organic because okay. as a law in organic there is there should be a soil uh, you know restoration mm -hmm. and in hydroponics there is no soil so you are not doing anything with soil so this is not organic so i don't want to really get into the arguments but what i want to see is the purity and the actual essence of uh, the concept of organic the concept of organic is any your agronomical approach should not cause any damage to the environment you are uh, where you are playing uh, you know the growing your plants mm -hmm. that environment should not be destroyed at the same time plant and the nutrition should not get uh, disturbed okay, okay. Yeah. so I we are safe and environment is safe that is what is organic yes hydroponic in that sense this is the perfect technique to really meet those needs yeah i completely agree with you in in that sense because uh i can you know with hydroponics you, when you mention sustainability uh right yeah. the the water that i use to maintain my yes. it is significantly 95% and when you mention you are exactly right that it is nice yes. less of water um and no wastage another no wastage not another reason why I love this. when with soil farming i have harvest a lot at, at the same time and my family is just you know two people so we don't need mm. that much produce but with hydroponics i can just keep how much I day and there is there's nothing that goes waste um yeah so for me that concept of no wastage lesser water it, it, it comes you know it, it just just so makes me sold on this. um on, on yeah this. and also the freshness i think because it's constantly in water it's constantly uh, has a uh, what why why is it that it's so fresh and it's so crunchy i bought i with the hydroponics greens that the, the greens are almost like a like chips because they're so fresh and crunchy yes yes so i mean uh, uh, you, you are in that field right you know what you do to keep your glamour you keep drinking water right <laughs> yeah. so if we do, if we do if we fall short of one glass water <laughs> and we see i mean uh, the charm is gone so our plants in hydroponics will never uh, take that shock of uh, you know the lack of water so always they have sufficient water and the cells are full of water their entire metabolic activities inside the cells is uh, 100% accurate no uh, in suffering and no they don't never get into the defense mechanisms which is not required to the plant so that's why they are very fresh and crunchy yeah so you i mean i was just eating uh, you know we have a farm bowl yeah. uh, new new concept <laughs> <laughs> so I, i i it's a big surprise to me that how fresh we can make you know the salad uh, yeah. with these greens which are grown in hydroponics yeah this is this is the way salad should taste right it, it this yes. is yes it should taste not like soggy and uh, you know when yeah that's not <laughs> Uh, salads should that's should not be exactly how salads should be so behind you i see like greens a uh, lots of green yeah. beautiful greens apart from green could you be also uh, are you trying to grow more vegetables yeah other than yeah. so yes actually uh, 
as I mentioned you, I started uh, this entire journey with uh, greens. Uh, but the uh, uh, idea is to uh, grow everything, all all vegetables, whatever we consume, we should be able to grow uh, using this system. So at least at least eighty percent of the basket what we actually uh, buy, we should be able to grow in, using this uh, uh, technology. So please tell us what what are the vegetables you are able to grow right now with uh, hydroponics? Yeah. Um, we, we, we are able to grow broccoli, we are able to grow cabbage, purple cabbage, we are able to grow uh, uh, capsicum, cherry tomatoes, and our regular domestic uh, uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, and uh, uh, hope you remember me showing you the karela, um, you know, the uh, bitter guard. Uh, and we can go all gods in uh, uh, hydroponics, we can go zucchini in uh, hydroponics. Um, what not? We are able to grow almost all these things, but some crops we are still working on uh, to make it, uh, uh, you know, the commercially viable. You know, the concept should be commercially viable. So, but otherwise, we we are able to, as a test, we are able to grow almost all these vegetables, including carrot, beetroot, even root crops. Thank you so much. Even you mentioned root crops. Wow, that yes, unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Um, so, what I, I need some tips. You have to give us some tips for all my uh, plant followers, enthusiastic followers. So, please give us some tips. Uh, tips on uh, growing uh, lush, green, healthy veggies. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, try to adapt this concept, hydroponics. Uh, you know, the where if you have a uh, light for three to four hours, uh, morning or evening, directly falling on the plants, if the balconies or rooftops, anywhere in your garden spaces, anywhere, that's sufficient for you to grow uh, your crops. Most of your crops you can grow there. Uh, hydroponics is definitely, uh, it's a, uh, believe me, it's a very safe uh, uh, technology um, and much more safer than whatever technology is currently available. I am confidently I'm able to uh, tell you because I've done a lot of studies uh, behind the scene. Okay, yeah. and then you 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 just what you need to do is uh, spend little time with your plants, treat them like I mean I I really uh, like the way you used to tell me like you know the, you go bonding and see your basil smell and yeah. your day is taken care, of, right? So. It's always good to spend little time with the plants, you know, uh, in our uh, uh, Vedic wisdom, it says spending little time with uh, plants will absorb all the negative energies. You get all positivity. So growing plants is very easy. It's very simple. We think it is complicated, at least with this hydroponics, it, it became more easier. Yeah. Okay. That's spend little time with those things. That's all. And you will be able to reap. Uh, any benefits reach to uh, reach us anytime you know anybody uh, if you want if you have any uh, doubts uh, in any micro management doubts and all we'll be able to help you out how to do it okay identify good seats um, you know the go to a right stores uh, buy good seats um, you know and then that's it your seed is the source of everything what you, what you are going to grow the seeds, yeah. Uh, when are you inviting me to your uh, very, very cool uh, farm? <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome anytime. We are waiting for you. <laughs> well, you do. Yeah. You know, the place looks yeah. like you've done with it. Yes, yes. Yes, you should. You should come at the earliest. <laughs> looks too <laughs> heavy. Wait, uh, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on this uh, live with us. I think most of our questions on hydroponics uh, have been answered. Thanks to you, um, especially you know what you said about um, the metal content in mm, yeah. um, in the vegetables and greens that we are consuming from buying inside. It's very scary thought that you have put in. So yeah. I. For, just for your information, I think I didn't discuss this with you uh, earlier. So we are uh, doing a lot of work um, in, you know, the extending, the, the extending this technology to our farmers. 
Yes. So now the farmers are becoming part of our, uh, uh, you know, activity. So a lot of farmers are now uh, they're 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 uh, falling with uh, Advan Kisan. We are working with them. We are transferring this technology uh, uh, to them, so they'll be able to uh, grow these crops using hydroponics. Hydroponics in general, yes, it's very, very expensive. So all of our research is focused in, you know, the uh, minimizing the capital expenditure and also the operational expenditure. So we are actually uh, uh, doing the buyback from these farmers. Uh, we give the technology to them and they grow, and we are the sole, um, you know, the aggregator. We are buying it from them, but of course they have freedom anywhere. I mean, new agriculture bill which has come recently. is also huh? so much aggressive in in especially in providing this facility so okay. we are now going uh, big with inclusive of uh, farmers yeah because this is a very actually this is a question that um, is very very important with advocating yeah. for um, with you know this climate change in it affecting you with things being so if, Uh, with our weather, um, you know, it, they, it, it's yeah. affecting farmers yeah. a lot. And hydroponics is, you know, if you completely in your control, you know that you know your produce is safe under all yeah. kinds of changes in weather conditions. And if you could help the farmers with the technology that you have worked so hard in developing, yes. it would yes. be phenomenal, right? So I yeah. understand. Actually, uh, uh, actually, you know, the government was supporting farmers to adopt new technologies. Correct. So they built a lot of greenhouses all around the city, so many places in India. I mean, is a subsidy uh, was there to farmers to build greenhouses. So okay. They were able to build greenhouses, but they were not able to grow crops successfully because it requires lots of water. You know, oh. you mentioned that you know the resource, natural resources are right. depleting. Yes. So now we are uh, uh, giving this technology to those farmers. They have the shelter, you know, the greenhouse. Correct. Uh, they were like, you know, they abandoned them. So yes. now they are back to activity with our uh, tech intervention. So this is something going very, very uh, good. We are very happy with that. Yeah, this uh, this is phenomenal. I also heard that you are um, working with farmers in a kind of uh, buy back produce from. Yes. as well which is a, a great initiative um, i thought yeah. and i i'm i love what urban kisan is doing i love um, i love that uh, you are sharing your technology with the people who need yeah. it uh so bro sir thank you for doing what you're doing for encouraging urban farmers at the same time looking out for our farmers uh, we need more people like you thank you for spending this time with us live today and i'll be soon with you there in the farm <laughs> yeah sure thank you samantha garu take care thanks a lot for having me in your show thank you bye thank you bye bye